Hey, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Rocket Arena. The game officially launches tomorrow for those of you guys that uh, want to jump in. You might have caught our video the other day, the kind of gameplay video we did. EA very kind of gave us a chance to go hands-on a little while back for a kind of demo hands-on session. And we should kind of show you some initial gameplay, basically for those of you guys that haven't seen it. I likened it to Smash Brothers with rocket launchers because you fire rockets at people increase their health damage or their kind of percentage until they go flying off the arena and it's kind of like a fun party game. Nothing you would take too serious, anything like that, but it's just like a fun mess around chaotic arena shooter. Since then I've had a chance to go hands-on with the full game and in this video I want to give you an overview as to what that includes, all the characters, the maps, the modes and all that good stuff. I also want to give a massive shout out to EA for very kindly sponsoring this video and giving me a chance to go hands-on with the game so if you guys do enjoy this then I'd like to be super appreciated and let me know in the comments down below what you think of uh, what you're seeing. So, top level, there are going to be, well, there's quite a lot of stuff you can kind of do in game. There is going to be a solo, kind of like a PvE mode where you can go against bots. I'll be honest, if you're going to play a game like this, you're largely speaking going to play for the online component. The PvE aspect isn't hugely exciting. It's a good way to practice, but I will be honest, the enjoyment you're going to get from this game is going to be playing online. You have a lot of different characters to choose from, all of whom have different customization options to unlock. You do, if you want to have like a battle pass you can work through to unlock loads of cosmetic items. You have artifacts that you can equip on your character to basically, you know, augment your abilities or kind of improve your character. You have different modes to play through, different maps to play through. And on the character front, there are 11 different characters. There's 10 initially. 10 characters to start with and there is an 11th character which we're showing you in this video comes as part of the season one stuff there will be some more stuff as part of season one can't talk about that just yet but i can give you a look at the season one character so very quickly going through the list we have amphora who you can see on screen every character you play as works around the principle of they have their primary fire mode they have their secondary fire mode and they have a special ability these are all different while everybody fires some sort of rocket everybody behaves slightly differently so you know some people have have ammo counts some people have infinite rockets some people have volleying rockets some people have you know like super fast straight firing rockets some people's specials are large aoe's others are more precise so you know there's a lot of variety amidst the characters but for amphora she has as her primary mode a charged torpedo which can be charged for increased speed and damage she has hydro form which morphs you into a pool of water and you can then basically come out of it launching opponent skyward in a water cyclone she is incredibly good on like defense kind of game modes or anything where you need to just sort of you know hold a point and she also has bouncy mines which launches three bouncing and homing mines you then have my personal favorite character blast beard yes because he has a beard but he's also a pirate he has the rocket cannonball as his primary which is an arcing high impact projectile it does hit hard but because of the arcing nature you have to factor in you know the trajectory more so it's not just a point and click you have to kind of account for the travel time he also has the charged anchor which is a charge you know you have to kind of hold down the charge and you let go to fire this really hard hitting anchor rocket it's great for knocking people out especially if they're on like mid to high percentages good way to kind of finish people off and he has a shockwave which is a knockback kind of an aoe knockback making him probably the best character when it comes to holding points like this kind of defensive like the mega rocket game mode where you have to hold a point because anytime someone comes near you shockwave and it just pushes everyone back it also destroys incoming rockets and you can kind of like use it as a dodge because every character has a dodge on Q, but you can also kind of use this one if someone sends you flying it's a way to kind of you know get a bit of invulnerability you then have Boone, who has a blunder blast as his primary, which is a ricocheting short range cluster shot, basically a shotgun. He has the Megadon scope, which then gives him a scope, which is a you know fast firing ricocheting sniper rocket. So you can use this to pick people off from afar, and you'll often find Boone players typically standing quite high up and just sort of you know sniping people from corners as you'd expect, camping in the corner. And you have Zix Vortex as your special, where you fire a wind vortex that blasts Boone backwards and pushes opponents with tremendous force. You have Izel, who has spear rockets. These are kind of quick firing and short range rockets. She has the bowler snare, which pulls opponents towards you. And your next spear rocket then homes towards snared opponents for increased damage. And she has the jackwa charge, which you basically hold to aim and you then lunge forward toward your enemy. So you can kind of use that in conjunction. You snare someone, pull them towards you and then charge into them. Really good for kind of KOing your opponents. You have Jato, who has the Skypiercer rockets, which are basically just fast and accurate single fire rockets. You have Rocket Swarm, which is a swarm of mini rockets. And you have the Thruster Suit, which temporarily boosts your mobility via a jetpack and upgrades your Skypiercer rockets. 
You have K, who has a charge bolt, which is a precise bolt. You charge it to shoot faster and further. She has the snow globe, where you basically deploy the snow globe that slows incoming rockets. And charge bolt shots from inside the globe also hit faster and harder. And she has a grappling hook, which grapples to nearby surfaces or damages enemies by hitting them directly. You have Mistine, who has card rockets, so kind of like your, your gambit player. These are accurate single shot weapons, and every third consecutive attack hits a three round burst, so kind of like, you know, throwing out a fan of cards. You have the mirror shield, where you conjure a shield that can block incoming rockets, and you have the phantasm, which materializes a Mistine double, and you can then reactively swap places with that double. You then have Plink, who has scrap rockets. You have the short range and rapid fire homing rockets. You have the boomerang, which ricochets off walls before returning, and you have the skedaddle ball, which is a thrown teleporter. So again, you can use it reactively and to teleport to its location, so you can kind of go somewhere, dish out some damage, bounce back if you need to, kind of handy. You have Rev, who has double whammy, which is a rapid fire explosive projectile alternating between the weapon's twin barrels. You have mag mines, which lobs mines that attach to any surface. And you have the Shatter Slam, which activates the uh, Shatterboard Flight, which kicks opponents with your board. She's kind of a little bit weird to sort of get used to, but I have seen her being uh, pretty successful, you know, in the right hands. You have Top Notch, probably my second favourite character, this kind of old guy. Basically, he has the primary ability, which is Bouncing Beauty, where you have this bouncing grenade, you can hold it to delay the detonation. You have Artillery Salute, which basically calls down this cascading artillery line of rockets. Think of it like calling in an airstrike in Worms. Awesome. And you have Zephyr Strike, which locks on and initiates a giant rocket strike. So he's kind of got like a homing attack. Also very useful. So those are the primary characters that come as part of the base game. And then in Season 1, you will also get to try out Flux. Flux has the Rockats, and that's said correctly, because these are guided bouncing rockets in the shape of cats. She has Black Hole, which is a slow moving black hole that can kind of grow in scale and damage by catching incoming attacks. And she has the Flux Verse, where she temporarily hides from opponents in an alternate dimension. So she is the first season one character. Now, of course, on top of that, there are a plethora of different stages to play on. You've got like Megadon Junction, Hypersonic Heights, Temples of Jaqua, you have Stompy's Refuge, Shimmering Depth, Star of Crater, Icefall Keep, Frostwing Grove, the Golden Zephyr and the Apogee Acres. And then you also have four different game modes to play in. You have the kind of standard knockout mode, which is your 3v3 competitive mode, where you basically just knock out the opposing team and the first to kind of hit the target score wins. You have Rocket Ball, which is where two teams compete to pick up the Rocket Ball and score it in the opposing team's goal. I'll be honest, this is, I mentioned this in my previous video, my least favorite mode, mainly because it kind of just interrupts the flow. Like a lot of the time you'll pick up the ball, you score, and then it just has to reset the match. It's kind of jarring to play, so I do hope they like address that in the future. But alas, that is one of the modes. You have Mega Rocket, which basically factors kind of like a sort of capture the point mode where a large rocket flies into the arena, blasting players out of the way, but then when it lands, you then need to go and hold that location to score a point. And you then have Treasure Hunt, which is basically where teams fight over the possession of a treasure chest. And, you know, when you hold it, it slowly drains the coins. Plus, when the treasure chest disappears, coins appear all over the map. And you then just need to run around and try and get as many coins as possible. First team to get the most coins wins the game. You do also have the aforementioned PvE mode, Rocket Bot Attack, which basically just means you can cooperatively team up and fight against bots. But honestly, when you have the opportunity to kind of go against players, that is far more exciting. So, for the time being, that is a rundown of everything in the kind of launch of the game. For those of you guys that are kind of wondering, you know, what you get to do in Rocket Arena, who you get to play as, all that kind of stuff. So, if you guys have any questions, by all means, let me know in the comments down below. But otherwise, be sure to keep it locked for plenty more. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget, if you haven't already done so, you can join the Arax Gaming Discord. We've got an awesome community over there with so many different channels for you to chat loads of different topics and different games. I'm in there, the team's in there. If you guys want to chat with us, find people to play with, it's just in general a great place to be. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of our future uploads.